All right, folks. We are live on Facebook. Good afternoon. Rob Smith over Marquette University, Center for Urban Research, Teaching and Outreach. Adam, what's going on, man? Hey, happy to be here. Well, we are in our second conversation this month about voting rights. And uh, today we really want to uh, have an opportunity to talk about the importance of, of young people in that process, our college students, and even high school students in some respects. You know, the, the longstanding campaign for voter equality has been multi generational indeed. Uh, and so we want to make sure to highlight uh, some of those themes today. We've got some pretty awesome folks with us, and we're going to allow them to introduce themselves. I want to make sure to, to highlight this image here from Freedom Summer, 1964, where college students walked into the belly of the beast, um, went, went down the Mississippi to help uh, register uh, African Americans across the state and in some of the most rural parts of the state, and at the same time, uh, did a wonderful job in, in, in encouraging and being a part of some of the groundswell of activism that would come out of Mississippi around voting rights. And so, uh, as, as we oftentimes do, we like to use images to tell some stories. Want to keep going, Keisha? We got our same folks in, in Command Central. Keisha and Ben are keeping us on schedule. We're on Facebook as well. Let's give our uh, attendees an opportunity to introduce themselves, Adam. Absolutely. So um, you all will do a bit. How about this? We'll give each of you about 20, 30 seconds to just tell us who you are. Um, and let's start. I'll go down. Raisha isn't able to join us today. I'll go down the list here. Peter, would you mind introducing yourself first? Yeah. Hi, everybody. My name is Peter Burris. Uh, thank you, Rob and Adam, for having me. I am the Wisconsin campaign manager with All Voting is Local, which is a nonpartisan voting rights project housed at the Leadership Conference Education Fund and the Leadership Conference on Civil and Human Rights. And Peter really um, is a, a co-conspirator today. Peter did a great job helping to uh, make sure we get the right voices on this conversation today. And it's a great opportunity for us to partner with All Voting as Local and, and the other folks here on the call today, because uh, we, we know how important the work is you do around voting rights. So thanks, Peter. We appreciate you, man. Uh, Kristen. Uh -huh. Hi everyone, Kristen Hansen with the Campus Vote Project. I am the Wisconsin <laughs> State Coordinator. Um, the Campus Vote Project is a program of the Fair Elections Center in out of Washington, D.C. The Fair Elections Center is a nonprofit, nonpartisan um, public interest law firm that focuses on cases around voting rights. Um, and the Campus Vote Project has people like me on the ground in the states in about, I think, 10 or 11 states now. And we work with campuses across the country. I think we're over 275 campuses now that we work with. Excited to be here. Cool. Yeah. All right. Looking Thank forward you. to working with you as well, Kristen. This is going to be <clears throat> not only an important time, but a, but a fun time to really be a part of these conversations. It's great. It is. And Brianna, I, do you prefer Brie? Bree is fine, yeah. All right, so Bree. Uh, so I'm Bree, <laughs> student at Marquette University, going into my senior year in political science. I'm an Andrew Gimmick Foundation campus uh, ambassador. I'm also an uh, intern with uh, Curdo, research intern with Curdo Center for Urban Research uh, Teaching and Outreach. All right, well, we are excited to have all of you here, and that's kind of the, the basics of your background. Let's move to the next slide. As a way of getting the conversation started, these, this is a history series, so we want to um, ask a question that's a little bit reflective, just to, as a warm-up, to discuss the significance of the passing of John Lewis on the current generation and the message sent through um, his funeral services. When we started, when we established the idea of doing this series in August, little did we know it would be kind of within the, the frame of a really consequential moment for discussions around voting rights. We knew it would be important, but we it was fortuitous how um, relevant it's become over the past few weeks. So can you guys talk a little bit about um, your interpretation of the significance of John Lewis, his legacy, and uh, what, how you feel that fuses into work that's yet to be done? And as you all gather your thoughts, we want to make sure that our attendees Jump in with the chat. You all know how we do this. We want to hear from you. We want to engage with you. What's up, Kristen, over at 
Wisconsin Historical Society and Heather, one of our awesome educators who works with us. We appreciate you all joining us, Nate, Lisa, and everybody else. We're a bunch of, bunch of repeaters over here. So thank you for joining us. And I'm just filling some time so that our panelists get a chance to gather their thoughts. I'm just rammed a little bit. Who's ready? Who wants to jump in? I can start. Let's talk about John Lewis, Kristen. Let's talk about John Lewis. Don't tell my boss, but I could not tear myself away from the funeral I watched like the entire four hours of it on a work day. Oops. That's, that's the <laughs> job responsibility. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the, the thread that seemed to be to me th running through all of the speakers at his funeral was the fact that he, while he got himself into a lot of necessary good trouble, which I think is a wonderful thing um, to use that phrase, uh, he always had a strategy. They were constantly talking about his grace, his intelligence, um, and the fact that he, he knew exactly what he was doing and why he was doing it. It wasn't just rabble rousing for the sake of rabble rousing. He, he had a plan. Um, and I think that that is something that people can really take from, um, from his work. Uh, I also think that um, his life in general, I hope will be studied in history classes for um, decades to come. Uh, we, you know, he lived a very long life and did, it, I mean, really he was working on voting rights for over 60 years. There's a lot there. And I, um, that, that in and of itself should be part of an entire history curriculum. Um, and I'm looking forward to that happening. But yeah, I think um, people should really study what he did and the strategies he used and the fact that he brought so many people together to, uh, to affect those strategies. The other thing that they talked a lot about was that even though he was elected to Congress and of course reelected so many times, he never forgot his district and where he came from. They, the reason he got reelected so many times is that he consist, consistently paid attention to what the people of his district really wanted from him and was back there all the time listening to them. Any elected official or someone who wants to go into uh, electoral politics should remember that. Many times people get elected to Congress uh, and forget where they came from, and he never did. Mm, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Who's up next? Who wants to go next? Yeah, I, I, I everything that was said, and um, I think it is important to study the history of John Lewis and you know other, uh, I would say, freedom fighters during that time of uh, uh, fighting for voting rights because without it, we kind of get lost, like the younger generation and people kind of uh, forget, you know, what voting means or you know uh, who who came before us. And I think it's also important because a lot of times we try to reinvent the wheel instead of uh, going back and looking at what they did during that time. So when you said study the history and learn more on, on about, you know, John Lewis and what he did in that in his tenure, I think it is important because a lot of times we're always trying to figure out how do we get people to care? How do we get people to understand that their vote matters? But, you know, they done it and uh, they, they passed the whole Civil Rights Act based, based off showing people that, you know, their vote matters. So I think that, you know, it is super important to go back and relearn, relearn the history of, of John Lewis and others who, who, can, who was in, in the fight with him. Well, you know, Bria, it's also a fascinating history. You know, not, not only is it um, important civic education, but it's, it's just a remarkable story, you know, in, in terms of folks' experiences in the South and uh, grappling with Jim Crow and then the importance of historically black colleges and universities, you know, it's just, there's so many threads to his life that uh, is, is instructive in so many ways. Peter, what you got? What kind of thoughts you would like to share with us? Oh, too much to add. I, I think, you know, you talked about this a little bit last week. There's just no separating John Lewis from the fight for voting rights um, and and voting rights in the way that they're foundational to our civil and human rights. Um, and, you know, I think as you saw with the memorial and so much of the coverage around his passing, um, it's clear how many young people are impacted by his story and um, 
how he's really the entry point into understanding and fighting for voting rights for so many people, um, and myself included. I, you know, I didn't really start thinking about the importance of voting rights until undergrad when I took a trip with a group of students to the Edmund Pettus Bridge to learn about his work um, and to the National Center for Civil and Human Rights in Atlanta. Um, and if anybody has, you know, if you haven't been to that museum and have the chance, it's just about the most incredible museum, um, which John Lewis had a heavy hand in, in building and, and is a very clear presence. Um, and I'll never forget the end of that museum. There's a big video with people marching for different areas of justice. Um, and I, I stepped into the room halfway through, um, started the video again once it, once it began, and um, a woman came and sat down next to me and video ended, felt her take a deep breath. And she said, isn't that just about the most powerful thing you've ever seen? Uh, the way that this video captures young people, and the, the power that young people have to, to impact democracy in the United States and in the world. And so, um, you know, I think he's just, just such a clear representative of the power of young people and particularly in particular young black people. And, and one of the main reasons that folks are fighting so hard to suppress the power of, of young people and in particular young black people. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for those very uh, insightful and, and, and warm comments because I, I think it is important for us uh, you know, on an ongoing basis to not only come back to John Lewis, but C.T. Vivian and some of the other folks we've lost this year. Uh, and, and, and as we, <laughs> as we face uh, abrasive racism and fascism coming from D.C., uh, it's ever more important. And that's the, that's the umbrella, of course, that all this sits in alongside or including a pandemic. And, uh, you know, Peter, the, the museum is, it, it is remarkable because it's not only a, uh, a remarkable uh, gathering of the story of civil rights in the U.S. It's global in its approach. And to connect these struggles and these issues here in the U.S. to other struggles across the globe is really, is really critical. The last thing I'll add, I know we got to get into some of our other themes, is uh, because we're, we're thinking about this, uh, these conversations for the classroom, John Lewis also represents an important uh, thread that we, we often use the language from protest to politics. Uh, what happens after the protest moment? You know, what do you do once you, you've uh, demonstrated, you've boycotted, uh, you've done, you, you've raised a certain amount of uh, social awareness to an issue? Uh, there has been legislative change or some sort of policy change. Then what happens? You know, that, and as we know, in some ways, that is, that is an even more challenging uphill battle. That's a different fight, obviously, but it's, is still significantly challenging because you have to move institutions and move politics and move people in ways that are, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a heavy lift. And so from protest yeah, to politics. If I, I would just, that's something that we've been talking about through the story of the open housing marches, of the Chapman Hall takeover, some local history, which is sometimes the fearlessness of youth. Um, it, it, how it can connect to the ideas of making institutional, systemic, sustained change and and john lewis's life is a blueprint for that <laughs> within the the different seasons of his life he he's kind of a one-man version of how youthful exuberance and and righteousness can turn into a career of creating change within the system you came out to protest in the first place so with that maybe let's this is a conversation focusing on the power of of and the challenges of, of students voting keisha can we move to the next slide